Well, hello everyone. This is Carrie Beck with How to Homeschool My Child. And it's Friday night. I can't believe I'm making a video on Friday night, but I wanted to finish up before the weekend. So what I want to do today, and oh great, something just popped up. Customize your dashboard. Got it. I don't know what that was. Facebook and all the changes. And now is that little live button really live? And who knows? Anyway, um, what I want to do tonight is talk to you a little bit about St. Nicholas Day because St. Nicholas Day is Sunday, December 6th. And so we are going to actually talk a little bit about the real St. Nicholas, about Christmas around the world in Germany because St. Nicholas is originally from Germany and we're not talking Santa Claus. Actually, the real the Santa Claus that we see today began with the Coca-Cola, I believe. And they created this jolly old soul um, back at the turn of the 20th century. And I guess they based it a little bit on St. Nicholas at the beginning. St. Nicholas, I will, let's just go ahead um, and dive right into St. Nicholas. He actually is a patron saint of children. And so, you know, a lot of us, if you grew up Protestant, you didn't really learn about the saints through the history. And so I loved being able to homeschool and teach my kids a little bit more about Christian heroes. That's what I would call these saints. And so Nicholas was actually a man who was uh, worked in Germany and he found out about a family who had a child that was going to get married, but the man did not have enough money for the dowry. And so he, this, the, now you may not want to tell your kids this, but um, he was, his choice was to sell her into prostitution according to history and legend. And so St. Nicholas found out about what was going on in this very poor family. And so one time he actually threw a bag of gold into, it could have been the window or it could have landed into the stockings or the shoes that were there um, hanging to dry out because he, you used to, we didn't have dryers and washing machines. You actually hung your stockings on the fireplace, on the mantle to dry them out. And so that would be one reason that they would do it as well. He also began to um, help other people. And a lot of times people at that time thought, ooh, if I put my stocking out, maybe St. Nicholas will, or whoever it is, will bless me as well. And so there was a lot of curiosity. But I think he actually really looked for poor children that he could help. And so that's really the legend. It is a legend. Um, I'm sure there are some historical facts in there, but that is the story of St. Nicholas and why we see him as someone who loves children and wants to help children and brings gifts to children because that's what he originally did back in the Middle Ages. So that is one thing about Germany. The other thing I have shared this story in our master classes is about Boniface. And Boniface actually was a uh, a priest, a Christian priest that actually was working in Germany. He left England. He went over to Germany because he was working in the Druids area. And there were priests that would actually sacrifice Vestal Virgins. And this kid comes running into uh, Boniface's camp, tells him, you've got to save her. And they go running back over to the camp where the Vestal Virgin is laying they're really the priest, the druid priest is about to um, sacrifice her. And all Boniface has is a wooden cross. And so he takes that wooden cross and he puts it right there on top of the girl's heart. And the priest um, sword or knife or whatever comes and lands in the wood. And so he ends up saving. Then he also, everyone's shocked because they're thinking their Norse gods are going to come and like kill Boniface. But nothing happens. And so they end up listening to him as he tells the gospel story about Jesus Christ and how we don't need to kill people now because Jesus Christ died for our sins and he is the payment and he died on a cross made of wood. So he starts whacking off their, I don't remember the name of the tree, but this tree that they worship, he whacks off the boughs and he says, take these home as symbols of Jesus dying on the cross for your sins. And that is the beginning of that. He also talks about cutting up the log and putting it in the um, fireplace for a fragrance that would be a sacrifice to Jesus. That was the very beginnings of the Christmas tree. And so tonight's edible activity is making a Christmas tree. So what I have here, and I've already done part of it, but let's see. I've got an ice cream cone right here. And all you need to do with this ice cream cone is cover it. If you don't have, you don't make your own frosting, 
just buy some white frosting and put some green food coloring and it's probably not going to look that great because whenever I do things live things don't always look all that great but anyway you're going to cover the whole thing I'm not going to cover it all right now but we're going to cover that much and then I have some mini M&Ms here and so I'm going to actually stick them on here to deck decorate Hey, I knew I was going to get frosting all over me. Let me get some of these out so they don't all get frosting. So we can put some of these here to decorate. And then I have these little pearl things that you get in the bakery section of the grocery store. So I used some of those. I put one of those right here on top. So we've got a top. And then you can actually use the pearls to add a little bit like their lights or something, whatever you want to say they are, and you can make your Christmas tree. Now, I actually did the other side beforehand just so you could see. This is just a fun little Christmas tree. I actually did this in my daughter Ashley's first grade class. Her first year she was teaching school, and we talked about the story of St. Nicholas and Boniface, and then the kids actually made Christmas trees as well. And so that's just a fun little way that you can commemorate the idea that our Christmas tree tradition came from Germany. Now, you might even talk about they actually use real candles on their Christmas trees when they first decorated. So there's that. Ugh, got frosting all over. So those are just a few ideas that you can um, use. You could actually rewrite the story of St. Nicholas, tell your kids the story, and let them list the five w who where when why what how all of that and then let them actually tell the story and um, outline it and then rewrite it that would be a writing activity i want to before i close just share one little resource for those of you that are interested in christmas around the world i will be back next week and in case you've missed any of our videos on wednesday night i talked about hope this is the week of hope with our advent wreath and so i'm giving verses each day i need to post today's and then yesterday I talked about Advent candles, I mean Advent wreaths and Advent calendars and gave you a bunch of ideas of things that you could do during the Advent season, starting with preschoolers and then going up. The other thing that we have right here is our um, Christmas Around the World um, unit study. Some of you have heard about it, some of you haven't. It actually goes through five countries. At the beginning it tells you exactly how to plan your unit study. It gives you a list of uh, how to say Merry Christmas around the world. That's just sort of an extra. Um, this is not the right one. Let me see. Well, I guess these are sort of mixed up. They're not really any one country. I pulled out a bunch. This is for Sweden. These are the Christmas traditions, the activities, the cooking, the carols that you can sing. Let me just say that on this, um, at the beginning of each section, you would have the story about St. Nicholas and the story about Boniface and the different traditions that come from there. And so with Sweden, you would have the same thing. Then you have different activities. This is Germany. These are gingerbread ornaments, and it tells you exactly how to make those gingerbread ornaments. This one is our one of our recipes because they all have food. We have food for everything. This is a Christmas tree tostada. So you could actually do that as well. And it shows you how to make a, a tostada. We have a whole section of Christmas poetry that you can use for copy work, memory work, um, or public speaking, whatever. And then the other thing that's really nice is we have a quick reference sheet. So we have our country, our traditions from that country, what to read, the Christmas carols, we have printables that come with the unit study. And then from here, we also have the um, snacks and meals and the activities. And so those are all within the Christmas unit study. If that is something that would help you plan and be intentional in your homeschool, to tie Christmas into your homeschool. I dropped Christmas at, th I mean Christmas, I dropped homeschooling at Thanksgiving until January. And we did fun activities. We still read every day. My still, kids still did math because we baked and we had to count Christmas lights and we had to budget and shop and all that stuff. We just didn't do a workbook. So... Anyway, those are just a few little ideas. The one thing I forgot to tell you was St. Nicholas, what the way we celebrate, and I actually forgot we did this. My dad is German, and I know that they celebrated Germany, uh, St. Nicholas Day every year. But here's the tradition. On December 5th, your children put their shoes outside their bedroom door, and when they wake up, there's either 
goodies inside or a lump of coal in their shoes. And that is how we celebrate um, St. Nicholas Day. So my kids would actually put their shoes on the other side of the wall as a hallway with all our bedrooms. They would put their shoes out and I mean, we just put some little candies or fruits or uh, it was very simple or go to the dollar store. But that is how Germany celebrates St. Nicholas Day by putting out your shoes outside your bedroom door and St. Nicholas comes at night and leaves something, whether you've been good or whether you've been naughty. So here's the little Christmas, um, eat your way through homeschool idea to make a Christmas tree in case you missed it. And if you want to hear the whole story of St. Nicholas and Boniface, you'll have to rewind. Now I will be back next week. I would love for you to leave a comment and just let me know what activity out of this, what, how would you use Germany in your homeschool? How would you use Christmas around the world? And I will also put a link to our unit study in case you're interested. Thanks for spending time with me. Y'all have a great evening, a great weekend. Sunday is the second day of Advent. I will have a blog post up about that as well. And then next week we'll start our new theme. I believe it's peace, but I need to double check. You still get another hope verse today and tomorrow. Y'all have a great day. I'm Carrie Beck with How to Homeschool My Child.